Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Lars, for the, the kind introduction. Uh, yeah, my name is Sylvain Ekel. I've been um, in, the, uh, uh, in the embedded and IoT industry for Microsoft for, for a number of years, uh, about 15 uh, to be, uh, to be uh, precise. And yesterday I was uh, running around uh, in the event a little bit, talking to a few people, and, and there's one question that, that you know, kind of came back. It's like, what, what is Microsoft doing in this event? So I find it quite interesting because, you know, most of the, the, uh, the exhibitor has either a Windows demo or talk about Microsoft Azure and talk about IoT. And the 30 minutes that we have this morning, uh, I wanted to kind of focus on why IoT is important in Microsoft and what do we do about it. Uh, we won't go into too much details, uh, but I will be staying over. Uh, for, for a few hours, so we can definitely discuss after the, the session if you want to go a little bit more deeper into uh, any of the topic we cover. So that's a little bit for the presentation. Let's talk a little bit about uh, my team. So I'm part of a group within Microsoft it's called the IoT Partner Device and Solution. And we are one of the many IoT team or IoT group within Microsoft. We do specialize on a very, uh, very uh, uh, focused part of the market, which is a device manufacturer and solution manufacturer. So working with um, partners such as yourself that are building devices that will connect to the cloud and drive IoT scenarios and IoT solution. I think we are the only team within Microsoft that are actually looking at the complete Microsoft IoT stack. And I will give you an overview a little bit of what this is. But first, um, I have my email at the end also of the presentation. So um, you'll be able to contact me if necessary. And of course, you can scan my nice badge here. I really like the application to scan the badge uh, later on today. What I will start uh, is a little bit by the boring stuff, uh, which is kind of the marketing message and, 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 and where we come from. But it's still important because uh, people look at Microsoft on so many different levels. We do our operating system, we have a cloud platform, we're big in enterprise, uh, we do so many different things. But it is only one thing that is really bringing everything together, and that's IoT. For us, it's a tremendous opportunity, which we're working across uh, the world, and across all our partners, new partners and existing partners, to enable a, a, a complete different set of scenarios. And so, if you look at IoT, um, is that a market? Is that an industry? Is that a technology? Well, it is a business transformation in our in our perspective. It's a business transformation that is powered uh, by new technologies and that impacts uh, a number of scenarios all across the different industries and markets. You know, everybody heard about the connected codes and the connected babies and the connected toothbrush. Uh, where we're going, most of the, the uh, the the, uh, the activities we're doing are mostly into commercial IoT, manufacturing, retail, um, security and surveillance, energy and smart buildings. I do have a couple of examples actually on, on some things we do with our partners. And you can see that in those examples, it is really about how IoT is transforming their business model and how IoT allows them to succeed in that field. Uh, so kind of a few examples that we're using quite a lot is Johnson Control, for example. Um, here, it's really about um, reducing downtime cost, right? Being able to get data from their cheaters uh, and being able to actually uh, reduce uh, maintenance costs, servicing costs by doing predictive maintenance, by knowing exactly the status of their cheater. They, uh, they, they estimate that they actually uh, save about $300,000 in all the maintenance costs. That's a lot of money at the end of the month or at the end of the year. Rolls-Royce is a, is a very typical example as well. Uh, this, is, this is a pretty old uh, example, but very telling on how we look at IoT from a Microsoft standpoint. Rolls-Royce 
uh, is building cars, but they're also building engines for, for jets, right? And they changed their business model uh, quite, a long, quite a long time ago on instead of actually selling engine jets, they'll sell um, airtime. Right. So how do they sell their time? Well, by ensuring that there's enough sensors that they can connect and gather that data from the jet engine, analyze the power consumption, and then build their partners. There's a completely different business model allowed by, um, by the Internet of Things, the capa capabilities of connecting devices, gathering data, and creating insight and intelligence from that data. ThyssenKrupp is uh, another one uh, closer to... Uh, to Germany, um, ThyssenKrupp builds elevators, right? And elevators are um, sometimes broken. They need a lot of servicing, a lot of maintenance. And it's really basically how do we reduce downtime, right? It is not about how do we connect elevator and how do we look at them and how do we have a nice uh, web interface to to see which ones are working. It's really about how do we reduce downtime. And we've been working with them for a number of years. It's about, of course, uh, getting devices, getting the, 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 the elevators, escalating data, and being able to use that data in a predictive maintenance model in a machine learning algorithm so we can actually um, predict when a, uh, a servicing needs to be done or even when an elevator is, is likely to have an issue because of a, uh, a vibration that shouldn't be there or, um, or, or any kind of, of, of data that, um, that is, uh, that is uh, putting, putting a flag on the elevator. And this is really done not manually, but with machine learning algorithm that analyze the, uh, the historical data uh, that ThyssenKrupp provides and train those algorithms to understand when it is when there's a likelihood of an elevator having a problem. So they reduce downtime and reducing costs and servicing and sending someone to fix the elevator, obviously. Rockwell Automation is another example we use. Um, and this is more about uh, supply, ch supply chain management. The ability to understand um, how you produce uh, uh, your product and how you actually um, uh, providing and providing them to your customers. So it's all about connecting the manufacturing plan, ensuring that you control the manufacturing plan all the way to how you pro how you deliver your product. So that's a few examples of IoT. And as I said earlier, uh, this is one of the reasons why Microsoft is investing so heavily uh, in in building a complete Microsoft uh, IoT stack. It's really to bring all those different topics together and help, help our partners transform into um, in their business model and their, uh, their product and services uh, fueled by, by IoT technology. So I talked about the partners and how they, they look at, uh, at IoT. Uh, I just want to do a small parenthesis on, again, what our perspective is and how we usually engage uh, with our partners on IoT. The way we're looking at it is really throughout a journey, a journey that has, in our experience, three main stages. Um, the first one, uh, we call it connect your things. Uh, I, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, we have things. It's really about looking at how you get data from your devices and visualize the data or store that data, right? That's usually the first step. Uh, and that allows usually customers to already provide some value because they know better where their, their, their device is located, if they're running, if they're not running, kind of have a direct visualization on their deployed devices. The second step that we look into is insights. Once you have that, that data, uh, now you can do something a little bit smarter than just visualizing it, right? And so what we want also to help our partners going through is thinking about when you have collected that amount of data, what can you do with it? What kind of data analytics can you do uh, to do a little bit smarter than what a human in front of, uh, of a diagram can do? Can you use artificial intelligence? Can you use machine learning uh, algorithm to do predictive maintenance or to find uh, correlation into a completely different set of data, 
uh, one of the you know type of example that we could look into is uh, a retail chain or manufacturing chain that is taking weather forecast or and their device data and maybe another set of data like for example the time of the year or or, or the um, or, or, or other calendar based on formation to look at if their correlation in, in manufacturing output is their correlation in, um, in how the devices uh, and how many devices I'm, I'm capable of building and how manufacturing chain produces. This is very difficult uh, when you have uh, just a couple of diagrams looking, uh, looking at this. And this is why we have a number of services then to help people um, uh, getting, uh, getting additional insights in that data, analyzing different set of data. Similarly, uh, user interface and, and kind of human interaction is something that, that can be complicated to, to develop. So we'll develop cognitive services. So if you have um, a video or a number of picture um, capture, how do you actually analyze the data? Typical example, you can check on our website the uh, uh, some of the demo that we provide for those services. If you look into cognitive services, you'll see uh, little fun demos where you can put your picture up and they'll try to guess how old you are, right? And how does that work? Well, we take uh, a huge amount of pictures, uh, stock pictures with people and their age, we fit into the machine learning algorithm, and the machine learning algorithm just train itself, and then we'll, we'll, uh, you'll be able to actually have a services that, that can do that. So the amount of scenario and use case that then you can do into an IoT, a commercial IoT um, uh, uh, scenarios are, are quite huge. One typical one would be security and surveillance, the ability to actually recognize faces in the crowd uh, by, by different standards and learn about, uh, learn about um, what, uh, what people are coming. Uh, retail also, uh, you know, trying to profile a little bit the customer that enters into a store, make sure that, you know, all easy, you know, what kind of watch she has, um, you know, is it a male or a female, and try to tailor advertisement towards, uh, towards the customer entering the store. So a lot of different use case scenarios here that, uh, that are going on uh, in the market and that we power through our platform. And the third stage, um, it's really also the interesting one, uh, and it's almost more of a, a business stage than, than a technology technology stage. What we also want to um, to help with our platform is people starting realizing that once they got to that stage of IoT, they can look at how to optimize their business model. Um, for example, as an example, um, if you're building a, a tooth printing machine, right? building a tooth printing machine, selling it to doctors or dentists. And so they have that machine that, uh, that can print a tooth depending on the 3D, uh, 3D um, uh, picture they'll take uh, uh, of the patient, right? Uh, they buy these devices, people sell those devices. Well, they could also uh, be charged by, uh, by the number of tooth printed, right? Reducing the capex, reducing the, uh, the amount of money that the dentist will have to, to actually put on the floor to get the machine and still have a recurring source of revenue. So all those scenarios become, um, become a, uh, a possibility with IoT and it's really for us kind of the last stage of the journey. And when we engage with partners uh, and our customers, they, they are usually on one of those stage. Uh, sometimes they're just thinking about it. Uh, sometimes they are, they are actually looking at how to transform their business model. And we have the resources to help them all along that journey. And that's PowerPoint, and that's a slide. It's great. Uh, everything works on PowerPoint, but in reality, uh, there is a number of issues. Uh, just put a few there, but there's a lot more into actually building and deploying an IoT solution. I mean, one of them is the first one we talk about is security, right? Uh, how do you actually make sure that the data stay private, uh, that you uh, are secure from the device up to the cloud, making sure that people do not, uh, do not, um, 
do not uh, either penetrate your system or create fake data. It's a very common type of attack when there's a wireless connection, people actually uh, create fact, fake data. Uh, how do you make sure that um, <clears throat> people don't get into your device and create a botnet like it happened not long ago? I think it was last year with the, with the um, consumer webcam uh, botnet that happened and took a number of DNS down. Um, Security is very important. Uh, we actually have a cert that's probably one of the only point where we have very strict rules of engagement on how you secure and encrypt the different data flow. And it's still a big, big topic because a lot of time uh, security is difficult to, uh, to, uh, to implement. It's not a button you push or link, uh, or link compiler that uh, options that you set, but it's a complete different a way of looking at a complete end-to-end -end system. And a lot of our customers are looking at it still today uh, with a little bit of round eyes when we talk about this. Uh, time consuming to get started. Uh, how do you get started uh, on IoT? Where do you, where do you look into? Uh, that's a lot of the, um, the activities that my team is doing, helping customers and partners actually getting started on their architecture, on their business model, on uh, on the tools they can use, uh, and and how to enter, uh, how to develop the interoperability in what what exists uh, today. Which come to the third point, uh, a lot of the time, almost all the time actually, uh, we're talking about you know what we usually call brownfield. There is something deployed, there is devices out there. They may be connected, they may not be connected, but an IoT solution needs to be compatible with what exists today, right? And that is, that is one of the big issues that we have today. How do we actually uh, help the customers resolve those, uh, those compatibility issue? And scaling is the fourth one I wanted to talk about. Um, I can take a Raspberry Pi or, uh, or an embedded device that we're working with, and then write an application that take sensor data, send it to the cloud, and then do a cloud to devices message so I can turn on the LED, right? I can do that in half an hour. It's great, but is that scalable? How do you actually do 10,000 devices like this? How do you manufacturing? You know, what's your data input? What's your data ingest? What are the cost implication of, of having that data? Uh, how do you actually do your device servicing and management moving forward. This is something also my team is very involved in helping device manufacturing going through those questions. So IoT uh, is, can be very complex, right? And this is a little bit how we're starting our product vision in terms of the Microsoft IoT stack. Um, our goal is really to simplify uh, partner and customers going into IoT and developing solution. It's not an easy task, but what we're looking at is really from our IoT stack, a completely, completely different layered architecture of different product. And really for us, there is uh, really four platform. The first one, is something I call a uh, devices solution. So how do you have an intelligent edge? How do you build devices that connect securely to the cloud? Uh, how do you support Windows, Linux, uh, microcontrollers? How do you support multiple uh, architectures? How do you support small sensors? And how do you ensure that you have the software tools to actually securely get that data to the cloud? And how do you actually drive device management also to, uh, to the devices? That's the first kind of thing we do in terms of the IoT stack. And then the other layer I like to talk about is what we call platform as a service or PaaS. If you worked in, with a cloud provider, either Microsoft Azure or some of our uh, colleagues, uh, it is a uh, common terms that people use. And for us, platform as a service in IoT means having a number of services that you can leverage to build your IoT solution. Um, that would be, of course, data ingestion, right? The ability to, to get data to the cloud on a secure manner at high, uh, high bandwidth, of course. Uh, the ability to have a device identity and registry uh, and the ability to analyze this data in real time 
or to store it into, say, a data lake or uh, a database like Cosmos DB. Not going to go too much into product, but the ability to analyze this data, visualize it. So a number of services here, uh, which would never fit into one slide, two slides, or ten slides, um, that people can leverage in the IoT architecture. And maybe at this point you're going to say, okay, it just talked about simplifying IoT and now he's talking about a thousand different services. Well, that would be a good remark. So another thing we do is pre-configured solution. Uh, so we call it Azure IoT Suite. And those solutions are basically kind of templates uh, that are customizable that you can use maybe for a proof of concept or a demo, and then you can do your own uh, architecture after that. Or you can actually deploy uh, your solution based on that pre-configured solution and just, uh, and just modify it to your, to your needs. And already there's a little bit more simplification there, the ability to actually get started much quicker. There is a fourth layer, uh, and that's what we call software as a service. Another option to go into, uh, into IoT is to actually use off-the-shell IoT software that runs on Azure, for example, uh, and that allows you to connect devices, get data, do device management, uh, or do um, data uh, 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 visualization. A lot less customization, of course, but the faster time to market. So it don't, on those four layers, uh, this is where we really uh, focus on, uh, on Microsoft IoT platform. And on the next slide, uh, I do have a few product name. Uh, I understand that is a little bit of an eye chart. Uh, so I'll, I'll just do a bit of name dropping, and then maybe if you have specific questions, later on we can follow up. Uh, on devices, so we have an operating system. That's Windows 10 IoT. Uh, it comes into two versions. Uh, one is Windows 10 IoT Enterprise, kind of the full Windows 10 version, uh, just with a different licensing and servicing mechanism for, for IoT needs. The other one, other one is Windows 10 IoT Core, and Windows 10 IoT Core is a free version of Windows 10. You can uh, go and download it and try it out, uh, run on ARM and x86, and have a basically basic Windows 10 kernel with all the security and device management uh, capability of Windows 10, and then a you know, so Windows platform um, uh, uh, application development on top of it. So very simple lockdown, uh, lockdown uh, experience for your end customers. Right? Uh, why do we do this? Well, to ensure that that we have uh, the operating system needed to um, to power uh, connected devices in IoT solution. But that's, of course, not enough. Uh, we have a lot of platforms that we don't support with Windows 10. There's a lot of IoT solution out there that needs different form factor uh, or hardware. Oops. And so we have also uh, different SDK um, in C, in Java, in .NET, um, Python. Uh, and we have two main SDK today. That's the IoT Client SDK and the IoT Gateway SDK. The IoT Client SDK is basically a a library, most of people use the C library that can help you integrate it, connect to, to the cloud and get message back. So it runs on Linux, of course, um, embed, uh, different air toss, and can be ported on, on different platforms as well. Uh, this is all on GitHub, of course. And the Gateway SDK is really about uh, building a uh, uh, SDK for devices that do protocol translation, storage on-prem before actually escalating uh, the data in the cloud. We have Azure device certification as well. That's more of a marketing thing where, you know, if your device connects securely to the cloud and there's different tests to do, and then we have actually a catalog of a number of devices that, uh, that can, uh, that can, they can kind of are Azure IoT certified that have integrated those those libraries. That helps a little bit when we talk to an end customers, um, and I'm almost finished uh, uh, to uh, to to look at what's what's uh, capable. Uh, we also announce uh, Azure IoT Edge, uh, which is a little bit of a more of a uh, intelligent edge. Uh, um, Pre-built solution for devices um, for uh, advanced uh, advanced scenarios and gateways and the ability to control and, and manage your gateway and your work stream from the cloud. 
I won't go too much into past because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, I just want to just talk about three things. There is the IoT services that I ingest and, and analyze in real time, the analytics and the visualization services. Uh, we can talk later about all, all of them. There's, there's a lot to choose from. Uh, and we have three Azure IoT Suite solution for now, predictive maintenance, uh, where you can learn a little bit about how to build a predictive maintenance model, remote monitoring, pretty classical IoT scenarios, and connected factory, uh, you know, if you connect factory and leverage OPC UA and the work we've done with, uh, with OPC UA Foundation uh, over, over the last few years, that's the place to, uh, to check. Uh, and in terms of software as a service, um, Third-party solutions are always an option. We're working with a lot of partners building Azure-based IoT solution. Uh, connected field services is very specific scenarios on field services and fleet management from our Dynamics team. And we just announced uh, Microsoft IoT Central specific for IoT for device management and, and data, uh, data gathering. Uh, look it up. Um, it is not out yet, uh, but, but it's been announced, so there's quite a lot of information on the web. Um, just going to, to skip this a little bit. Um, the main message here is um, one of the things that surprised a lot of people when, when I meet them for the last four or five years is how open we are on IoT. Um, you know, Microsoft is really about building this platform for IoT working as much as possible with or um, other operating system or other cloud vendors, um, working very well with Salesforce, with, with IBM, uh, supporting a number of operating system. And it's really about, uh, about helping you succeed in your IoT project first and foremost. And that was it. I am almost on time, uh, which uh, which, uh, which is always uh, nice. Um, there's a couple of, um, of web link here uh, that you can try. They're pretty easy to remember. Uh, Azure.microsoft.com, for example, or internetofyourthings.com. Well, you get a little bit more information what we do for IoT, both from the Azure side and the Windows side. And if you have an IoT question, if you have an IoT project, or an IoT solution you need some help with, why connect with your regional team if you don't know what it is and who it is? Um, well, ping me an email and I'll put you in contact with the right person in Microsoft. Thank you. <laughs>